is going on Hive Warriors, it's your boy Edward V and today I'm going to tell you how to actually burn belly fat. The way you can actually do it scientifically via the multiple meta-analysis and the studies that we currently have. This ain't a bait and switch, this is a realistic representation of how you can burn belly fat. Let's go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. As quickly before we start, this video is brought to you by yours truly, Flesh Fitness and the Flesh Fitness Jump Rope. If you haven't gotten yours yet, what are you waiting for? With an ergonomic design, aluminum handle, and swivel design, you can't go wrong with the Flesh Fitness Jump Rope. Only $16.50. You can click on the top right-hand corner of this video or down in the description box below. And of course, as always, guys, thank you so much for your support. Now let's go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, so we already know through multiple studies that you cannot spot reduce specific parts of your body, uh, which basically every part of your body, you cannot spot reduce. We do have one study uh, that had a control design and showed that you can probably spot reduce to a very small extent uh, your upper body versus your lower body via resistance training mechanisms that could be applied either uh, on your upper body or your lower body. But there is one place you can, in a roundabout way, spot reduce, and that is your belly fat. Now, this is why you can spot reduce belly fat. The reason you can spot reduce belly fat is because we know for a fact that you can burn visceral fat using specific workout methods, eating methods, uh, training methods. And before you run out of here saying, oh, here, it's a visceral fat thing. Visceral fat increases the circumference of your waistline. It pushes your stomach forward because the fat still has to settle around your organs, which are mainly around your stomach region. Therefore, if your if you're subcutaneous fat, which is the fat right below the, the, uh, the skin, if the subcutaneous fat is, is, is out and you have visceral fat, you have subcutaneous fat here and visceral fat pushing that subcutaneous fat even further out. If you reduce visceral fat, it'll come in making your stomach look a lot smaller. So if you want your stomach to look smaller, you can target visceral fat. You can actually physically target it by doing specific things because visceral fat gets triggered and burns and it's actually brown adipose tissue so it's ready to be burned more than the white adipose tissue, which could be a lot of that tissue that's around, uh, that's under the skin, the subcutaneous fat. For you to burn that, you just have to apply very simple tactics and then you're home free. You'll get visceral fat reduced. Now, one key point is that no matter what you do in terms of like liposuction, for, ex for example, liposuction does not go underneath the abdominal wall. So if you were to do liposuction, let's say you were to do that, you will lose subcutaneous fat, but the visceral fat will still be there because it'll be under the abdominal wall. It goes under your abdominal wall while the subcutaneous fat is on top of your abdominal wall. So what are the things that you can do? Very easy. Low intensity aerobic exercises. A brisk walk can help reduce visceral fat. Cycling can help reduce visceral fat. Swimming can help reduce visceral fat. And being more active in moments where you don't necessarily have to be active. For example, when you're on a phone call, pacing around while you're on a call or standing up while you're on a call, that can help continue to reduce visceral fat. Getting your sleep in at least eight hours, but with an added note, not more than 10. Studies actually show that there is a grace period in between 10 and six. If you sleep six or less, it's very detrimental for you in terms of reducing visceral fat. If you sleep 10 or more is detrimental in terms of visceral fat. Studies have shown that visceral fat has increased in adults over the age of 40 when they sleep 10 hours or more or sleep six hours or less, the grace period is around seven to eight hours. Don't worry about what those 
entrepreneurs tell you uh, you should be sleeping one second of the day. No, you should you should sleep eight hours for your physical health, which is as important, if not more important than just trying to make sure you're productive every single moment. Get your sleep in seven to eight hours. It's incredibly important and it will definitely help you reduce visceral fat. Another thing that you can do and something that you should always be doing is applying resistance training. Building muscle, increasing lean mass also reduces visceral fat. These are things that you should do. These are things that you should not leave on the table. If you only care about the caloric intake, then you're going to leave things on the table. You're gonna say, well, if I could just put myself at a caloric deficit, resistance training doesn't matter. Uh, Aerobic exercise doesn't matter. Walking doesn't matter. Standing doesn't matter. Taking the stairs versus taking the elevator doesn't matter. Parking further away so I can create more incidental walking doesn't matter. You're going to think these things doesn't matter. You're going to think these things don't matter because you're just focusing on burning body fat via calorie restriction, which that has to be there. You have to know that you are at a net negative energy balance at the end of the day. So you want that there, but you still can do other things to quickly reduce visceral fat. And visceral fat can drop much quicker than your subcutaneous fat because we have beta and alpha cells and beta cells, usually there are more beta uh, fat cells, adipocytes in the stomach region than there are alpha and that beta cell is really difficult to burn. Those are usually the ones that release fatty acids last because they just want to hold on to your fatty acids. Can't blame your body as a defense mechanism, but the good thing is visceral fat is brown adipose tissue. And if you didn't know, white adipose tissue is not ready to be burned. It actually has to go through a white adipose browning, turn brown, then it's ready and it's revved up to burn. But visceral fat, the majority of it is already brown adipose tissue. So it is ready to be burned as long as you apply these mechanics. You do also want to make sure you're at a caloric deficit because that helps, but you could reduce visceral fat without being in a caloric deficit. And that could still be working essentially against you. But just know that the reduction of visceral fat and the increase in visceral fat will actually physically manifest itself and show itself visually on your stomach as it pushes your stomach out with all the subcutaneous fat in front of it. This is the actual only true way to spot reduce any part of your body, reducing visceral fat, because visceral fat has specific things you can do to reduce it. Every other part, every subcutaneous part of your body, that thing goes out the way it wants to go out. And everyone is completely different. Some people lose subcutaneous fats, and some people lose the subcutaneous fat in different regions before other parts of their body while somebody might lose this uh, while somebody might lose subcutaneous fat in a different part of their body before they lose subcutaneous fat in another part of their body in contrast to that other person we're all biologically different is all hereditary is all based on our unique mixture and biology and dna on how we reduce body fat versus someone else and we can't pick and choose where it comes off your body's just going to make that decision for you the only thing that we have control over is visceral fat but the good thing is that does affect how your stomach looks so you reduce visceral fat you reduce your belly hopefully this video has helped you guys and of course as always i want to thank my patrons for my patreon i'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here